I tried beating the hardest mode in all of Terraria, and this is what happened. Yo! <laughs> From what I remember, he's pretty easy. This part I hate with a passion. Shit! Why doesn't my normality relocator work? Supreme bitch. No. Damn. <laughs> yeah. You fuck. Points. What is this? I'm about to die. I died. How are you? Yeah, most. Yeah, I died. Bro. Today, boyos, I come to bring you the full Inferno mode playthrough. That is correct. I actually pulled through and did it, and here is how it went. If you want to see an episode-by-episode -episode breakdown of this, I did upload up to Devourer of Gods onto my channel. Never fully actually beat him, but here is, I guess, the rest of the long-awaited series. If you haven't played Inferno mode, let me explain what this is. Essentially, it's a Calamity add-on that is supposed to be as hard or even harder than Malice mode, and, you know, combining Calamity bosses and the Calamity add-on, which is already hard enough itself, just makes the game of Terraria completely crazy and near impossible to beat. And now the thing that I want to mention is Inferno mode cannot be played on master mode. It has to be on expert mode. So indeed, this is the hardest difficulty. No, I cannot do Inferno on master because it will literally not allow you to access Inferno mode if you are playing on master. But anyways, here we are within the world. The slimes are crazy doing tons and tons of damage. I opened up a little starter bag and essentially up until like the Devourer of Gods, I'm going to be playing as the range class just as I did within my Inferno mode playthrough through as I am most familiar with it and I really like the range class as it's very powerful up until the Devourer of Gods. Throughout the playthrough I also use the progression of Get Good Woe so you know of course just who doesn't use Get Good Woes for his uh, Calamity progressions. I'll put on a picture of screen of every single phase that I'm going through for the range and I'll try to update it as some of the weapons are outdated for his tutorial with the newest update of Calamity. So upon opening up the starter bag I went to go chop down some trees and I got my friend Arma to join into the world because yes we're going to be playing together. I think the first wig ever, man. I've already basically beaten Inferno mode by myself, and I wanted to do it with somebody else as it's more fun. There were some bosses that were a little bit laggy, but you know, most of the time it was good. Arma's channel, I'll put on screen right here, and I'll drop his channel down in the first link of the description just in case you want to check it out. Anyways, though, I started digging myself a elevator as I wanted to get myself more ores, and during this time, I found a couple of chests. I used a Spelunker potion to get as much lead and iron as I could. I also mined up a bunch of gold as I wanted to make a gold pickaxe and just make my mining faster and during this point of the playthrough I was going for the pre-boss range loadout which would basically consist of me getting fossil armor and a mini shark and all the accessories that you see on screen the shark tooth necklace Luxor's gift frog leg cloud in a bottle Hermes boots I tried to get as many of them as I could but stuff like the shark tooth necklace I don't think I actually got because I was just too lazy to go and farm it out and at the same time I was getting no blood moons up until like hard mode or something like that I consumed some life crystals that I found while mining and well basically I spent the entire time mining. I then made myself the prison builder for the NPCs and then just built a massive pyramid of prisons for all of the NPCs. Soon after, me and Arma went to the right side of the world and we discovered a desert pyramid. He told me to go inside and so I checked it out. I broke all of the little ornaments, picked up everything that was inside of the pyramid and I got myself a magic carpet, which was pretty neat as I'm going to need that for Auric Tesla armor at the very end of the game. I went over to the jungle biome with Arma dying non-stop oh, yo what jungle bat run out of here as fast as you can die i hate not having oh no please oh my god <laughs> I got myself a bunch of life crystals and I was grinding out for some chests. I also needed some stingers and jungle spores and I was also helping Arma collect some jungle spores as Arma is now playing as the summoner class. And he needed something for summoner class but I can't really remember what it was. Who even plays summoner? In Calamity? Like what? what Anyways here I picked up some obsidian because I did find some pretty neat obsidian just laying in the middle of nowhere. Also got myself a magic mirror which was nice so I wouldn't have to abuse recall potions for literally the rest of the 
the game. I went into the underground desert biome to get myself some of these 30 fossils so I can craft myself fossil armor. And during this time, I also found myself the little teleportation area for the giant sand shark and that one like desert dimension, which Arma really wanted to check out because he hasn't played Calamity since then. And so I showed him around. What the hell is this? Oh, what happened? With I found some weird structure, some huge structure in the desert. Is this a boss spawn? Oh, this is the different dimension. Different dimension? Yeah, you've never been to the sand dimension? It's like, it's past hard mode. I picked up Luxor's gift from one of the chests within the desert, and I also found myself the sunken sea right under the desert. I went to clear out more chests, got myself some more potions, some pretty neat loot, and as I came back to spawn, I used the extractinator to get myself a bunch of fossils, and I crafted myself a full set of fossil armor. Soon after, I used all of the gold I had recently acquired to get myself the mini shark, completing basically almost our entire loadout. All we need is a a couple of like niche accessories like the cloud in the bottle or in the Hermes boots. Honestly, I think the Hermes boots were the only thing I really needed because the frog leg is just frankly not too useful within this stage of the game. Right after this, I went to go build a massive sky arena. Well, massive for pre-hard mode and once that was built i went mining for more life crystals because i really wanted to max out my hp before i even try to attempt the eye of cthulhu as most of you know inferno mode like if you've ever played it you need to be over prepared for every single boss so by the time you go to fight the very first boss you already want to have like the greatest armor that you can get at that stage of the game and also have full hp which is what i did and then i got more hp for arma as this dude was just doing absolutely nothing is just like fighting random enemies trying to find chests not even using spelunker potions so i kind of carried him at the start of the game carried him through the most boring part of terraria might i add and once he came back to spawn i gave him all of his hearts i got you all your hp by the way how heroes mod <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> that was the nerd <laughs> that was the nerd <laughs> I then went mining for more ores. I tried to get myself a bunch of gems for hooks actually because we need to craft a better hook. And then once I was back at our base, I crafted myself a diamond hook. Right before we were actually going to fight the Eye of Cthulhu because Arma had the summon, a goblin army started approaching. But before that, we decided to actually summon the King Slime because during the time that we were in the caves, the whole night went by. And so, you know, I thought it was dark, but like very soon after I saw the sun come up. So I'm like, oh, maybe we should not fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Anyways, here is us fighting King Slime. Oh, he's actually not hard. He's gonna come up around, up around here. Dropped all the way to the bottom. Why is he all the way at the bottom? What do we do? Stay on the second layer so he doesn't fall all the way down. But you can still shoot him. Doesn't he spawn the ninja soon? As you can see, lots of excitement. A little bit buggy because he just like jumped down to the very bottom. But look, we defeated him in here as our very first Infernum mode boss. Place down the trophy. And this is actually where we're going to place down every single trophy that we get in the game. We're going to try to defeat every single boss, every single mini boss and try to get every single trophy. So at the end of our little journey, you'll be able to see every single totem. Won't that be absolutely beautiful? Anyways, we went to go take out the goblin army, which was quite neat. And now we can get the goblin tinker very, very soon. I then went over to the desert with Arma and we went to go fight the desert scourge, which you can just check out what happened for yourself over here. Oh sh They buffed it! Oh sh It's buffed! It wasn't like this before. Did you play Inferno? Yeah. Man, I'm taking fall damage. What is this arena? I'm gonna blame you. Damn. <laughs> Ah, uh, bro, 30 seconds to spawn in. This actually makes me take 30 damage every, like, 42 damage when I jump down. <laughs> Low IQ. Let's remake the arena. I died, and then Arma died, and then we decided to do it again. And I really like the rework of this boss. It's really nice. But here you are. Go and watch us beat it. Why does he always spawn on me like that? Like, damn. Why do I have more than 400 health? Maybe it's an oh, accessory. I that's my thing that I was using, the red. He's going after you for some reason. Bruh, I haven't got hit a single time yet. Okay, that was my first time getting hit. Don't die, you go, you got this. Can you not heal? I don't have heals with me. Why would you not bring heals with you to a boss fight? I forgot. I thought his AI would be smarter, but it's so dumb that he like runs into me when I try and dodge him. Because he's not actually trying to attack me. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I was trying to go under him, right? Because he was about to run into me. And then he just proceeds to go down. 
Hmm. There you have it, second boss down, Arma died in the middle of the boss fight, but you know, Arma does have a skill issue. And after this, as it turned to nighttime, we actually summoned in the Eye of Cthulhu, and we went to go fight it. And you can check out how this boss fight went, it was absolutely tragic, I have not fought the Eye of Cthulhu in quite a while in an Inferno mode. Okay. Now bring it here. I swear if I take fall damage from this arena too, I take fall damage from this arena. You suck at building arenas. <laughs> yo, yo. You're good, you got this. Bro, I'm about to like die, it. bro. I just lost my adrenaline because arena fall damage. Six, five. <gasps> Probably need, oh, probably need better stuff. Again, what? Do them again real quick. I need to bring healing potions. Yeah, so basically we both died as we kind of both forgot the Eye of Cthulhu AI. We've both actually played Inferno mode and Arma's beat it once, but it's just been such a long time that you just kind of forget the more difficult boss's attack patterns. But yeah, Arma decided to summon in the Eye of Cthulhu once more as I was coming up the rope and it hit me and I actually fell off and it just started blasting me non-stop. Yo! Early start. Yeah, oh. early start! My ass! He blocked me off the platform and he's attacking me! <laughs> Trust me. That- the rope is the best place to fight him. You know, you can fall all the way down and go all the way up. Bruh, I'm at half my health now. I am about to die. By the time I got up, I was nearly dead. So, thanks to you, Arma. But here is the rest of the boss fight. Oh, I don't good. understand it's AI. You got this, you're still alive. You got this, you're still alive. <laughs> okay, now if you can hold it out for 30 seconds with your max HP. That attack I don't understand, like he literally walks right into you. Yeah, bruh, you're, the platform is no good. <sighs> Trust me, we could beat him. <laughs> that is correct. Managed to die, and then we try to go for it again. Wait, I'm about to get my uh, rage. When he's about to kill you, just let him come to me. If you have, you heal, heal. I already healed him. He's like 2 HP, you got this. The very third time, Arma dies, I have Cthulhu's low, but so am I. I'm two good hits away from death. And here is me defeating the Eye of Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> you almost died. What? You almost died. You like die. choked on your f***ing mouth. No, I was just burping. What the hell, bro? That sounded like constipation in the mouth. There you go. You guys probably thought I'm a horrific Terraria player, but nope, I beat it. And we can now move on to the next boss. I put down the totems and went to explore the rest of the world. And along with this, we have a whole new loadout that we need to get ourselves over here which is the pre-hive mind loadout slash the perforators. Everything is on screen. Now, one thing I do want to tell you from experience, from actually playing, the Pompler has been severely nerfed. So go with the fungicide as the fungicide is probably the best weapon to fight the hive mind for ranged. But anyways, just a little quick side tangent. I went into the sunken sea to go and get myself prism shards as I needed that for sea prisms, which then I could later use to craft myself the storm surge. I never actually crafted this and I want to test it out. Maybe be better than fungicide and while i was in the sunken sea the big old clam spawned of course i didn't go fight it because it's completely overpowered for this stage of the game and then i went into the sky islands in search for harpies and all of the random loot that drops in their chests. i found myself a pair of fledgling wings which was really really neat and soon after i went over to the mushroom biome and dug out a massive arena to try and go fight krabulon while digging out this arena arma actually decided to spawn in the clam and like attack it so i came to his aid and we got absolutely demolished even he was surprised <laughs> that clan is kind of hard <laughs> that's the guy who said oh don't worry bro don't worry man it's pretty man. my apologies the original gangster Anyways, while digging out the arena for Krabulon, I decided to fight the Torch God, and well, I did it. Arma didn't really succeed too well in this endeavor. And then after this, we came back to go fight the giant clam, but well, it was quite hard because we needed a massive arena for it, and we decided to get a bunch more potions and then like actually fight it across this massive area within the sunken sea. And you can just check out how the boss fight went. He's only a mini boss? Where is he? Where are you? Yo! Bro. He got me. I don't know how to beat him, bro. He's impossible. Uh, Thing is, my, my weapon's very close range. It's kind of annoying. Full health. Yeah. Go faster! I'm at five feet! Okay, go die. I was literally at five HP. These other enemies are so annoying. I'm gonna be above your head in a second now. 
We did manage to defeat it, so here you go. It was really clutch. We did kind of cheese it, but hey, good enough. I rate it. I went to go finish the rest of the Mushroom Biome Arena. I started working on the magic storage. I have one IQ. Instead of crafting... Whatever. I crafted 10 storage hearts. <laughs> I thought that was the other thing, but it wasn't. I removed all of the items from the chest and actually put it back into the magic storage during this time. And then I just went to go finish off the mushroom arena. I used the arena platform builder to build myself the little platforms and the campfires. And then as soon as I was done, I summoned in Krabulon. Arma quickly teleported to me and this is how the boss fight went. Yes. Yeah, he's not too hard. He does get a bit annoying in the later stages though. I missed the rage. Yeah, watch this part. Easy. Please, fungicide. Tell me if you get the fungicide. I also need the fungicide. Why? Oh, wait. I need the fungicide, bro. Why? The fungicide. For what? For what purpose? For what? What can I say? Good music, easy boss. I got the fungicide as well and we were also able to place down his trophy. We then went over to the corruption biome to summon the long wormy boy. I built an arena and then we started breaking down the orbs. There was no really upgrade paths that we can go through before defeating the eater of worlds. So we need to go and defeat him to get ourselves a nightmare pickaxe and be able to mine hellstone and get all of his really nice accessories. Anyways, I blew up the little orbs and we summoned him in. This is the boss fight, check it out. not even attacking me, it's just... Go back to spawn and heal. We can't use the medic summon for him during a boss fight. 15 seconds. 3, 2, 1. Yoink. That's super easy. I got two bags. I got two bags as well. So we managed to defeat him on our very first try. He wasn't too difficult. I thought he split up one last time, but apparently not. So as you can see, within Inferno Mode, some bosses are just harder than others. And this was not one of the hard ones. I think even in my own solo playthrough that you can check out on my channel, this didn't take me too many attempts and it really was one of the easier bosses. But the boss that comes next, I definitely didn't have an easy time with when I was playing this game alone. Using the slimy saddle, we made our way all the way down to the underworld and started digging up Hellstone. I got myself two guy voodoo dolls, just because, you know, why not? And then we went to go defeat Krabulon a bunch more times for money, as I needed to reforge my accessories to get ready for the hive mind. I placed a bunch of pumpkins just to, you know, maybe craft a pumpler, as I thought I would maybe want to try it out. Maybe it got rebuffed, but as you'll come to find, it did not. And as soon as we found ourselves the hive tumor, I shot it down, got armor to teleport to me and we went to go fight the hive mind here is how it went you gotta dodge when he does that get my adrenaline he's after me oh he's gonna do the rain i'm gonna go lower so i can go higher and actually attack him. don't like that he's always like out of reach of my thing this reminds me of devourer of gods oh the cloud in the bottle messed me up i'm taking that away what? Oh yeah, those aren't wings. Yeah. So near the end of the boss fight, Arma proceeds to die. I completely forget the AI of this whole boss, and we just get nuked to the brim. I die. We fail. We have to find the Hive Tumor again. Let's go for it one more time. This time I decided to buy some potions as I was just completely going potionless for some reason. I don't know why. I was very brave, but we found the little tumor again. We broke it, and we went to go fight it. And this is how me and Arma beat the Hive Mind. Gotta dodge when he does that. Oh, you can dash off of him? Shield of Cthulhu. Where is he? Come more to the left. Well, I, I have no clue. He's he's fighting you in the middle. I'm, he's just targeting you. Kill my adrenaline is ready. Oh god, he's about to unleash his inner demons. Don't die. Okay, good. Jesus. Take the relics. The sky is glittering with cyan light, meaning we can now mine arrow spec ore. But there was one weird thing. The ore in the sky wasn't blessed for some reason and we couldn't mine it. It was glitched out, so then we have to use bombs to explode it. Which, thanks to Arma's high IQ, he was able to actually get it. So that was pretty neat. 
Disenchanted area light. We need to defeat the perforators. Okay, wait, can you uh, teleport to me real quick? Was it some item that we had to use to enchant it? Watch and learn, little man. Look at this one. Why? Watch and learn, little guy. Why though? Why does that work? Watch and learn. I went to go craft myself the Aqua Shard shotgun as that was just better compared to the Pumpler. But this was before it just got severely nerfed. So the Aqua Shard shotgun is the way to go, trust me. I went to go upgrade a bunch of the accessories that were basically recommended to us. And I also crafted myself a full set of Aero Spec armor. Crafted myself acceleration rounds, you know, got all the good stuff. And then we went to the jungle to go and fight the queen bee. And can you just check out and just appreciate how freaking big this hive is? It's truly insane. I don't know if I've ever seen a hive this big. Holy shit, this is the most biggest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, they're pretty big on large worlds. Are we good? How big is this? Holy, I'm gonna see this area. Oh, this is massive. But here is our fight with the queen bee. I have to break those honey pits. They're so annoying. Honey pits? You made honey pits? By accident. Survive! I'm almost coming! I'm coming! Nice. As you can see, I died. But at the very end, we pulled through. And we managed to defeat the Queen Bee. Not having to defeat the Queen Bee anymore. I do not like that boss. It's very difficult for the stage of the game you're in. But the boss that comes next is far harder. You can count on my word when it comes to this. Somewhere around this time, a meteor had landed. And while coming to the left side of the world, I actually discovered the meteor as I was near Skeletron's dungeon. And now, there was this new structure introduced in Calamity Mod that I think let you, like, enchant your weapons or something along those lines. It was this weird building. If you can put it down in the comments below help other people out because i genuinely forget what it's called but essentially the meteor dropped on that building and it kind of soft locked us out of getting some like really good weapons for the summoner class especially for arma so that was a bit of a pain and he got quite mad which is kind of what caused him to switch classes later within the playthrough as it turned to nighttime and our arena was built i waited for arma to come and we summoned in skeletron and this is how it went What? I'm coming, come. He's attacking you. There's like a pattern to dodge it, right? It's like slowly go up or slowly go down. Yeah. For that thing, you have to like stay to the side. I think that Calamitas. <laughs> yeah, we got absolutely obliterated. It wasn't good. And we just went to go fight Skeletron over and over again. Here, you just have to move to the right. This one's very easy to dodge. I just don't like how much damage it does. Maybe that's because I only have 30 defense but still. Whoa! During the little break that we had, a goblin army invaded us and we took that out quite easily. I built a couple more houses for some NPCs as we're going to make a pylon system so we can teleport around the world easier and we completed that. And then we placed some beds, made a little house near Skeletron's dungeon and went to go fight Skeletron while of course placing our respawn point very close to his dungeon where we had built the house. And here is our attempt at a boss fight once more. Go to sleep. Wait for it to turn to nighttime. But I need to fish. Go fish. <laughs> Isn't there a game called Go Fish? Yeah. <laughs> you have 21. No, go fish. Pulls out a stick, uh, actual fishing rod. Like, <laughs> yo, what the hell? This guy doesn't know how to play. Actually, because he's not attacking me, I'll just go all out for damage. Go do your work, summons. Yeah. Yo, watch out, he's going for you. You heal or something, you're at like half health. We're gonna take breaks like that? Yo, get out of there, yo, let, let me go. Damn, I had 24 gold. Okay, you get out of there, I'm gonna... Um... Die. Yeah, I'm probably gonna die, so you chill. I'd rather survive longer than do more damage. I'm not playing solo. So I suck with Skeletron. Mostly because I didn't have to fight him a million times. I'm like somebody else here. When he does the attack where he has all the balls that shoots from the top, you just have to stay in the middle and just see where the gap opens up. He's out. He's done. Yeah. Did you, did you hear that? What? Was that only on my thing? What? There was a thunk sound effect. Did you not hear that? I think so. So I went back, placed down the little trophies, and then went straight into his dungeon to pick up water candles. 
So I can craft myself the Ultimate Battler Scroll, which is like the new version of the Ultimate Battler buffs in Louis AFK. And all it does is essentially just increases the spawn rates by like 10 times or something along those lines. It's very overpowered. So yeah, we need the water candles. And during this time, Arma just decided to go fishing. Why? I don't know. You guys ask him. You want me to bring you a crate potion? Sure. But anyways, I got all the stuff that I needed and I actually saw that acid rain started. So I went to go clear it out just so I can get it checked off the list. And after this, I went to go farm out the Desert Scourge a little bit more for money, of course. The Eye of Cthulhu a little bit more for money. Also crafted myself the Archer Fish during this time as that was the recommended pre-Wall of Flesh weapon. And well, I can't really craft Statagel armor. So we're going to use the Archer Fish to fight the Slime God. And then after this, we essentially went to just go farm out a bunch of bosses to get enough money to buy all the accessories that we needed for the Terra Spark boots. As you know, I'm not going to go adventure the entire world where I can just like defeat a couple of bosses a couple times and just buy it from the dude that sells the accessories. Just kind of like a dumb moment. After this, we went to go defeat the Deer Clops. And well, this is how this boss fight went. It was absolutely tragic. Take a look at it. From what I remember, he's pretty easy. Damn. I don't remember him being that hard. Let me just do slime god. And so we left this one for later. I crafted myself the Terra Spark boots. I basically had all the accessories for pre wall of flesh, as you can see on screen. I went to go reforge all the accessories. And once that was done, we went to go summon in the slime god. And this is how the boss fight went. Let's go. You kind of have to like go under him because he usually jumps too far. Focus on the on one first. Oh, this one you just have to like. I forget how to run away from his little minions. Purple one's dead, right? Where did he go? What? He's I glitching like, out. Oh! This oh. Thing for Crim's Tain slime. This is the acid slime. I got my adrenaline. And all his health is already gone. Oh, this phase is pretty hard for me. I always died here. <laughs> Oh, my 60 gold! As you can see, wasn't too difficult. Slime God is probably one of the easier bosses once you learn the AI. It's really just like a little hump that you have to get over for the very first time you fight it. But after that, it's not too difficult. And even to this day, I still remember it. Even though the last time I played Inferno mode was like six months ago. So yeah, Slime God, easy peasy boss. Right after this, I made myself the Overloaded Blaster, which shot out Slime. So I had to go defeat a bunch of King Slimes in order to have ammo. Because, well, Slime, you don't come across as easily as you come across you know bullets and with this i also had to go to the alchemist and buy a bunch of gel which was a pain as it cost like one silver for one gel so you know one gold for a hundred shots is it's not bad when you're playing calamity because you do get more money from bosses but still it was a bit of a pain anyways after this we went to go build a massive arena within the underworld i also had a full set of static gel armor and we were almost ready for the wall of flesh but there was one tiny problem the wall of flesh needs like tons of space i think when i was was fighting wall of flesh alone on my inferno mode solo playthrough that i have on my channel i literally had to nuke out half of the underworld from bottom to top in order to actually have enough space to fight the wall of flesh and dodge all of the attacks so i had to go craft this wand that essentially uses mana to break a bunch of blocks and so i started going ham on the underworld breaking every single block within my vicinity and well once that was done we had like half of the underworld completely destroyed all thanks to me of course but now that me and armor were both ready we stood as far to the left as we could i grabbed the guide voodoo doll out of the 29 guide voodoo dolls i had and i chucked it into the lava and here is our our fight with the grandiose fleshy wall. My whip is good against multiple targets, it said, so I'll just like hit as many as I can at a time. Just dodge the lasers, because they're all after you. I just go up and to the right. Up and to the right or down to the right? It depends where the, the main eyeball laser shooting. Okay, while well, you take on those, I'll take on the main head. Yeah, now you just run and dodge. Rage! I missed the rage. Easy. Yeah. As you come to find, this boss is stupidly easy. There really isn't much to it. You just kind of dodge the main laser, and every single time the eyeball shoot, you just go up and to the right or bottom to the right. Overall, the Wall of Flesh is a pretty easy boss for Calamity. Because, you know, like for normal Terraria, the Wall of Flesh is kind of a struggle when you first get to it, especially like Master Mode Wall of Flesh. Jesus, I'd never want to fight that. But Inferno Mode, hey, it's alright. Anyways, we are now pre mechanical bosses, and we need to either get Cobalt or Palladium Armor, and I need to get myself the Slag Magnum, which is actually a decent weapon 
happen for, well, what we have to do here. I placed the wall of flesh relic and, well, I went straight to mining. I broke a couple of demon altars in order to get myself souls of night and then I went mining for palladium. I got myself a palladium pickaxe and then soon I went to go craft a full set of palladium armor and after that I made a giant hole within the underworld and started farming out for those huge massive creatures to get myself the slag magnum. And what I mean by huge massive creatures is the uh, is the earth elementals. I always forget what they're called. I got it quite quickly. Wasn't too much of a hassle. Had to call Arma over at one point because I thought I was going to die when there was like two earth elementals. So that was pretty neat but we got the weapon and now we're chilling. I then went to go reforge a couple of things then we went farming for pixie dust so we can craft ourselves fairy wings. We went to go kill some wyverns and well we both crafted ourselves a pair of fairy wings while also taking out the blood moon. After this I wanted to do the Eternia crystal so we did the very first stage of it as it was quite easy and after this we went to go redefeat the deer clops as he needed to suffer for what he has done to us. I then also got the needler from Arma which I always thought was like a post plantero weapon or something along those lines but this is a very OP weapon and I did see that it actually dealt more damage than the slag magnum so if anyone wants to use any weapon use the needler. It's better than the slag magnum from Git Good Woe's tutorial but I'm not really sure how you get it. Anyways once it turned to nighttime I buffed up and then we summoned in the destroyer and this absolutely massacred us just check this out definitely was not the boss to go. Why does it have exo max music? Yo, I may or may not be getting absolutely. Yo, why is it buffed? What is going on, yo? What the hell is up with this boss? Why is it so hard? I'm about to die. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm about to spawn. After this, we summoned him in again, and this is how it went. His first f attack always gets me. I don't get it. What the f is he doing here? Like, I'm already half HP. It's just those probes are annoying. Maybe we should do the twins first. Three, two, one. No way. Oh, all the NPCs. I don't remember this attack, the laser one. He's literally the off-brand Exomech. Oh, this phase isn't too hard. Oh, sh**. Defense famous. appears to be amazing here. Bro, he's getting me right with his head. Oh, he's almost dead. See, I told you we could beat him. Yeah, with like the biggest cheese of all time. We managed to defeat it, and I placed down the trophies. And after placing down the trophies, I went to mine some Mithril and Orichalcum. I made myself the pickaxes, the armors, the anvils, and then we went to go fight the twins. And this is how this went. I think the twins are the hardest for me. Yo, what the hell is going on, bruh? I'm getting absolutely demolished. I don't get this attack. This is a new attack. There's so many new things since I last played. Uh, can you teleport back to spawn? I want them to target me so I could use my adrenaline. Um, as you may come to find. You teleport back to spawn, right? When you're at spawn. Don't run into me. I'm going to lose my adrenaline because of you. Go. They're right Wait. here. Well, they're targeting you. I can't attack them when they target you. Okay, go. They're still at me, bro. I came all the way back to spawn. They're gonna target me no matter what we do. <laughs> what? Just like my fellow went back to full HP. As you can see, we literally beat them on our first try, which I don't know how. I remember the twins being absolutely just vicious, just horrific if you're playing solo. And somehow I only managed to die at the very end. But regardless of this, we beat them and we actually did pretty well. And now our world is blessed with adamantite and titanium. So the next logical thing to do is, well, I guess go mine it, no? I made myself a full set of titanium armor and now we're ready to fight Skeletron Prime. So as soon as it turned to nighttime, we went to go fight the old little Skeletron boy. And this was probably the easiest out of all of the mechanical bosses for some stupid reason so i guess it was nice to fight him last because you know i wouldn't want to fight the twins with their max hp as the very last boss oh now he does these things he's gonna shoot like this laser attack he's gonna do a lot of damage with his eyeballs but i had two platinum I swear if you took my two platinum oh oh when he does that dash attack, you have to go down or up and to the right. He's gonna shoot a bunch of nukes. Gotta dodge those. Oh sh! I ran 
It's like home. <laughs> Why'd I pick summer new? Okay. Yeah, he's not too hard. He used to be hard when I first played the thing, but attacks are pretty predictable. But here you are, Skeletron Prime is dead, and now our jungle grows restless indeed. Not only does the jungle grow restless, but we can now also find Hallowed Ore within all of the underground. So that's gonna be pretty neat. We can craft ourselves a full set of Hallowed Armor. But, well, I wasn't gonna go do that yet, because I wanted to go fight Cryogen. So we made a massive arena within the ice biome, and well, we went to go fight Cryogen. And for some reason, it was a little bit laggy at some points, but the boss fight basically went like this. You can check it out for yourself. Oh, damn. I didn't see that. I'm lagging. I'm taking so much damage, too. I'm dead. I'm at like 8 HP. Oh, this boss just robbed one of my platinum coins. I died as well. Okay, I'll be back. As you can see, we both died. Took a massive L, but we're not gonna quit that easily. We also tried to go fight the Aquatic Scourge, which from what I remember last time I fought him, he was not this difficult and this guy got like a mega buff. So it was a surprise to both of us when this guy just started spazzing out, going light speed like the Devourer of Gods and you have to like dash into him to avoid his attacks. Yeah, just check out this boss fight for yourself. It's absolutely hectic. We both died and just decided to leave him for later. Yo, what the hell is this Ben propaganda? Yo, this shit is strong. Bro, I'm about to die. Yo, they changed everything about this boss. Th this has no resemblance to the thing that I was playing before. Why is this so hard? It's like the Devourer of Gods now, kind of. Okay, well, I guess we need to go mine Chlorophyte because uh, it's not going to work for me. <sighs> I'm going to go mine Chlorophyte. Why is it still alive? Yo, yo. Like, like no damage to it. Yeah, I'm coming back to the ocean. The thing's still alive. I'm only seeing his head. Where is he? I can't see his body. We went into the jungle and I went to go get myself chlorophyte armor and I found myself this massive plantera area. And well, this is what happened. What the hell is this? Bro, you should teleport to me. What is this? Bro, you should teleport to me now. Wyverns. Wyverns are attacking me. No, I'm serious. You should come to me right now. This is a super secret DLC biome. These Plantera bones? I don't know, but come down here. Should we try to break one and see what happens? Oh. Oh. Yeah, we could beat her. Yeah. Pretty easy anyway. Well, at least they didn't buff Plantera. Yeah, you're not in the second phase. For I use my rage they still have like 5 million health. What the hell? 130,000 health. Oh, bro, I'm out. You could deal with this. <laughs> Yo! I had to go fish. Arma left me to my own ability, and I had to teleport away from there because I would have died from Lantera. Anyways, I crafted myself a full set of chlorophyte armor, got myself the chlorophyte shortbow, and then we went to go fight Cryogen, and well, this is how it went. Going up and down is like the best way to dodge all of his attacks. How his attacks blend into the background? Yeah, I know. Okay. This time, we managed to take it out, and then I went mining in the Hallowed Biome to get myself a Hallowed Ore, and to also find myself the Summon for Queen Slime. So as soon as I came back to spawn, I crafted myself a full set of Daedalus Armor, which was actually, I think, better than Chlorophyte Armor. And I was getting ready to craft myself all the pre-Plantera and pre-Calamitas gear, which I needed the Sea Serum for, and I also crafted myself a pair of Angel Treads during this time. We went over into the Hallowed Biome and went to go fight the Queen Slime, and this got a completely new rework, and it looks absolutely amazing. It has like Empress of Light vibes, but also like Skeletron vibes due to the attacks. It was a really nice boss to fight. Check this out for yourself, and tell me which boss is your favorite within all of Calamity after this video ends. Oh yeah, wasn't there a rework for this boss? Yeah, there's definitely a rework. But I don't know, I'm taking hard L's here. Oh, Shanna's calling me. Pick, pick oh, up. Bro. I hope you could deal with it. Yeah. How did you take less damage than me standing in one spot? It's a pretty nice rework. This one's actually kind of fun. Yeah. So, upon the feet of this boss, 
We came back to spawn, and we were invaded by a goblin army. After clearing the goblin army, I went over to the left side of the world, and I took out the perforators for myself, just because I wanted to check it off the boss checklist, and well, this wasn't difficult at all, because it's like a pre hard mode boss, so I had no issues with that. And then once that was done, I came back to spawn, and got all the resources to craft myself the Yank Shield. After clearing out another goblin army, I went to go reforge all of my items, and then we went to go fight the Aquatic Scourge. And what we realized is you're actually supposed to fight the aquatic scourge within the ocean which was very stupid of us because as soon as you leave the water it becomes like completely enraged and just absolutely demolishes you so you know we weren't having too much fun fighting it enraged just for the very first time so we went to go fight it finally within the water and well this time we managed to take it out and you can just check out how this went like we could try and fight the sanguinous I hate that attack. Especially when it does it like beside you. Oh, Go what? The surface. Oh, sh. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't too horrible, and after this, Arma decided to go fishing once more and go try to fight the Dread Nautilus. So we summoned it in, and we went to go fight it. You can check out how this went. No! Oh, Anahita! Wasn't that like the old name, Anahita? Yeah. And then they changed it to like... Siren. You could go fight these weird goblin sharks. Doesn't even have music, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you hear that? No. There's the f***ing plans for the zombies dolphin noise. Really? <laughs> yes. <gasps> Sanguine stuff? He needed to get like one of the summon staffs for it. I forget what it's called, but he got it and we were now ready to go fight Plantera. Also had the sea serings during this time, and I went to go dig out a massive arena for the planty boy that we were actually about to go fight. Before that, we went to go fight the brimstone elemental within the underworld, and this wasn't too difficult. You can check out the boss fight. I guess we were too advanced for the boss regardless, but the attacks were quite horrific if you weren't ready, as they do follow you around. It's not worth attacking the boss here, you do like no damage, no way of your end. That laser doesn't help do anything for dodging. Bro, this fly is harassing me! This one single fly. Damn! Get down here, he's stuck in the wall. Wait, what? He's shooting the opposite direction too. Yeah. Damn, don't aim it at me. <laughs> Why are my bats not attacking? None of my summons are doing anything. Weird. I'm really doubting somewhere. But anyways, we took that out, and after this, we came back to the jungle. I finished up the arena, we built the bed, set her spawn point, and summoned in the overgrowth Plantera herself. Where's the bulb? Here. Having died tons and tons of times within this boss fight, I kind of understood the AI of it, so it wasn't very difficult for me, but Arma was having quite a hard time. Along with this, I also accidentally using the sea Searing summoned in like two queen bees, so that wasn't nice, but what can you do? Oh my god. You have to come to me, come to me. Top left, top left. 8 HP, I'm so good at this game. I just stay far enough. Away. Essentially, near the end of the boss fight, Arma was camping out because he wanted me to take her on because I knew the AI better than him. So I ended up literally taking her to almost a quarter of her HP and then Arma pulled through in the very end, then dying right before killing her. And then I finished her off, giving us her relics. This is like the hardest part. Oh, well, my permafrost core just kind of saved me. They're about I have a second life. Okay. And now, not only is our dungeon reformed, but we can travel to a different dimension within the desert, and also a brand new energized plant matter is formed within the underground. Once I came back to spawn, I placed down a trophy and got ready 
for all of the pre-golem stuff we had to go get. But before that, we actually had to go defeat Calamitas, so we couldn't make any more progression towards Golem, which I had completely forgot while even playing this game myself. Anyways, we got the summon for Calamitas, we also farmed out the Pumpkin Moon a bunch because we needed to get money, and once all of that was done, I cleared out and made a tiny above ground Shroomite biome, and then we actually went to go fight Calamitas. I was using the Cosmic Bolter, which was a recommended bow that was post Plantera, so I thought it would be good, but this is essentially how our Calamitas boss fight went. <laughs> Whoa. What happened? Right As you can see, it was stupidly easy compared to when I fought it alone once, so we took it out very quickly and, well, as soon as we took it out, it randomly just despawned. And see, this is where we were a bit confused. We didn't know if it was just because it turned to daytime or something glitched out. But essentially, we defeated her and nothing happened. But oh well, I guess we just took the L here and refought her one more time. And this time upon killing her, we actually got the trophies. I placed them down and we're ready to go and fight Golem. For this, we're going to need a weapon called the Megalodon. This is an upgrade from the Mega Shark, as you could probably guess. And we're also going to need true my armor. The next notable thing is we need the Asgard's Valor, which we did not have up until this point. So that's pretty neat. And the Asgard's Valor is actually an accessory that's very useful up until like the end of the game. So we are now getting into the big boy weapons. I can also craft myself Terra Bullets, which is what I did. And essentially during this entire time, I was waiting for my Mushroom Biome to grow. So, you know, I can actually convert my Chlorophyte into Shroomite. I got myself the Megalodon by going into the Sunken Sea and collecting a bunch of random resources. So I got that. I crafted myself all the necessary accessories. I farmed out the Pumpkin Moon to get myself tons and tons of money me and arma went to go fight the twins to get more money and around this time we actually decided to go and fight the leviathan so we went over to the right side of the world and then waited for the siren to spawn in which took quite a while but once she spawned in we decided to start absolutely blasting her him with his little underpowered summoner class and me with my megalodon we were making rapid progress and you can check out how this boss fight went turn it off no turn it off it's already oh. here did you not hear it no bro Five, four, three, four, five. How can I get her attack patterns now? It's very simple. Super easy, boss. So we managed to take her out on our very first try, and once I came back to spawn, I placed down the relics, and we got on to, well, fighting Golem sooner or later. We decided to fight the Old Ones Army event one more time, before, well, fully devoting our lives to Golem and the post Moon Lord experience. And once that was done, and I got myself a full set of through my armor, and armor was fully powered up, we went to go and fight Golem, but this did not go at all as how we wanted it to go. Instead of using the Megalodon, I was actually using a weapon called the Leviathan, which just seemed to be better, and it had better DPS compared to the Megalodon. And so while fighting Golem, you can check it out, but this happened. You blow the platforms. What is this? You literally can't dodge that. Mm -hmm. Arena's too small. That glitched. Yeah, it completely bugged out. Our arena was so ab abysmally small that we could not avoid any of the attacks. We even tried to get Rod of Discord potions later within the playthrough and nothing was helping. We built spawn points, we tried to cheese them in every way that we could, but nothing was literally working. Oh sh**! Enraged! Just chill right here so he doesn't enrage. We're in the wall. Oh! No! <laughs> 
Ah! So I did have to take the L, go into basically creative mode, which I used heroes mod, and I made the arena a little bit bigger. I hope you can forgive me here, but we are literally struggling with this boss. I had like 10 plus attempts and we couldn't make it past like the second phase. So I'm sorry if you think this is cheating. What had to be done was done. And now we went to go refight Golem. But before that, we wanted to take out Dude Fishron. So we went over to the ocean and we summoned in the little boy Duke himself. And you can check out how this boss fight went. Yeah. <laughs> He's not that bad, see? Oh my god, that wave is massive. Be careful of the waves. Like, not the tornado, but just like those giant blue things. Well, yeah, the tornadoes kind of. Where even is he? I can't see him on the map. He's in this tired phase. As you can see, we took him out. And then this time, essentially, we're just farming him out a bunch more times so we can get the wings. And then once we both had a set of fish on wings, we went to go fight Golem for real this time. I decided to fight Golem using the Tsunami as, you know, post Duke Fishron is probably better than post Leviathan. But here is our official Golem boss fight. Oh, I got him. As you can see, we managed to beat him, and I got myself the Pigsaw, bringing his altar all the way back to spawn, with our next boss being the Plaguebringer Goliath. And officially also putting us on the pre lunatic Cultist loadout guy, we have to go get a bunch of new armor pieces. So while actually farming for the cells for the Plague Reaper Goliath, I also need to craft myself a full set of Plague Reaper armor, which I'm also going to use to craft the summon. So I was killing like two birds with one stone, and once I crafted the armor set, we went to go farm out Golem a couple more times, so I can get myself all the necessary items to craft myself the on scope as I needed the destroyer emblem and after clearing out a massive arena within the jungle we set up a couple of platforms and summoned in the plague ringer goliath make him target you <laughs> I told you he's not too hard though just dash in the opposite direction of where he's going I hope you could deal with it because I'm low and I'm gonna heal in the corner again Using the Tsunami, I absolutely shredded through him and then, you know, like cheesing him with armor. We took the boss out quite easily. It wasn't too difficult. And for some reason, they didn't have the nuke explosion at the very end. Like the nuke just didn't blow up. I remember personally when I fought him myself, once I killed the boss, the nuke still followed me and just blew up on me and I died. So I'm kind of sad they didn't keep that in. But yeah, here the boss is dead and our next boss is the Lunatic Cultist, which we are nearly ready for. We then went to go fight the Frost Moon to get that off the checklist and also farm out some money. And once that was done, we were trying to use a bug net in order to go and fight the Empress of Light. We are trying to get ourselves the Prismatic Lacewig, and once we got it, we essentially waited for the right moment as we didn't want to fight it yet. We went to go fight the Martian Madness event, and upon taking that out, we could check it off the checklist. And once this was done, I went to go clear out a massive arena for the Empress of Light within the Hallowed Biome. Using basically all of our pre lunatic cultist gear, we gave Empress of Light our all, and you can check out how this boss fight went. You said it was such an easy boss. Go heal, bring, bring it to me. Holy f I swear the boss is like mega buffed. I do not remember her being this difficult as when I was playing it solo, I defeated her I think on my very first try. So I don't know what's up with her here, but she was very difficult and we died and we gave up and we just left her for later. But the boss fight is exceedingly beautiful. Once our little shenanigans with the Empress of Light were done, I went to go fight the Lunatic Cultist and then Arma shortly teleported right after to me because he was just like, I don't know, I don't even know what he's doing. He was probably just like fishing. Who fishes in Terraria? Anyways, little, little anti-fishing propaganda aside here's our lunatic cultist boss fight you need to run around a lot you know, just go in circles and go in oh this thing. 
Oh, forgot about this attack. Yeah, the very first time we failed and horribly. I don't know how this happened, but I completely forgot that he had like a literally one shot attack at the very end of the boss fight, which well, armor got obliterated by first and then I came shortly after. So we went to go fight him again and this is how it went. Why are you so high? Fuck, how am I about to die? This is the easiest boss. Whoa! Yo! What is this, Baja Black? <laughs> Fuck! I thought you said he's easy. He is. To no one's surprise, once again we died. And after fighting off the pirate invasion that invaded us in the middle of the Lunatic Cultist boss fight, we fought and defeated the Lunatic Cultist, and this is how it went. You know what? Just tell me when you're about to die. <laughs> He does the laser. I'm gonna just go away. <laughs> now I come back. Work smarter, not harder than <laughs> Did I solo him? <laughs> Anyways, we can now go and fight the pillars. So, I went to go take out the solar pillar first, while Armor was taking out another pillar. And then I went to go take out the vortex pillar after this. The weapon that I was going for next was the vortex popper, as it's probably the best weapon in the range class that I've used against the Moon Lord with an Inferno mode. It was very good when I was playing solo. So, this is what I'm aiming for here. But for that, we're going to need some weapons from the Martian Madness event, which I already think I had because I did do the invasion. But yeah, we took out the vortex pillar, then we did the Martian Madness event again, and I got myself the vortex popper. We went to go fight Astrum Arius, which was pretty neat, and we took him out very quickly. That seems pretty easy. Like and soon after this, we went to go fight the Empress of Light. Now, the Empress of Light was easy at this point because, well, we were too overpowered for her, but I did manage to die at the very, very end of the boss fight, which was kind of silly, but you can kind of count it as I took her out. So, we did it. Trust me, bro. Where are you? What are you doing? I didn't have to target you. I have homing weapons. She doesn't want to target me. Oh. I'm about to get adrenaline. Why well, die? <laughs> no! Anyways, after this, we went to go fight the Ravager, which you can check out how this went. Is he after you? I'm getting attacked by things I don't even see. Wait, did you know he gets buffed later? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. The boss fight was exceedingly easy and then we did our very final old ones army in order to summon and fight betsy and we took her out pretty easily as well because well we were more than capable enough of defeating her oh it's betsy 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 pepsi i hate that mage is like a glass cannon you take you do a lot of damage but you get hit once and you die <laughs> And here we are! We defeated the final pillar, and well, as the nebula pillar went down, our screen started shaking, and as I was near the nebula pillar, and Arma was at spawn, Moon Lord spawned it. But he didn't spawn it on me, he spawned it on Arma, who was all the way at spawn, killing all of our NPCs, trapping us in this like weird eternal prison, trapping me in blue water, and absolutely making no sense. Have to redo this. So here I crafted myself the Celestial Sigil so I can spawn him in myself and now we are ready to go and fight the Moon Lord once again. We summoned him in and you can check out how this boss fight went. Oh, his arm is gonna die so quickly. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on this lighting thing. You can still dodge it. What the hell is going on on the screen, bro? I don't know. You need to kill his core and survive. He's invisible for me. Yeah, I don't see him either. What? Oh, get away from that. Wait, uh, the guy with food is here. Oh, no! 
we were dying non-stop and there wasn't really much we could do about it for some reason we just like kept on dying and there were many times where we would just glitch out the moon lord was super buggy when it came to multiplayer almost to the point where we thought we wouldn't even be able to beat him just because he would kind of like spawn outside of the bounds and like one time he even ran away so I don't really know what was going on there, but we tried him out a couple more times and we finally managed to defeat him. Yeah, he's gonna Turn die. From... Yeah, bro, my adrenaline pulled through so hard. And so here we are, Moon Lord is defeated, and we can now get onto all the amazing boss Moon Lord content that Calamity is truly known for. I crafted myself a full set of Vortex armor, and essentially the next weapons that I was going for is the Disseminator and the Clockwork Bow. I found that the Clockwork Bow is actually better than the Planetary Annihilation, especially for the meatballs that we're going to have to fight very soon, and for Providence herself. But so during this time, I went to go craft myself all the accessories I needed, all of the weapons, we fought Moon Lord a couple more times, we fought golem a couple more times i then went to go just spam completely spam the leviathan to get myself the community but i was probably the most unluckiest person ever and i just couldn't get it so after this i got mad and then we actually discovered an infinite money glitch because while i was buying the boss treasure bags me and armor realized that you can just buy moon lord treasure bags you can sell all the luminite and you would make like twice the money for what you actually bought the bag for but i wasn't going to become the number one enemy of the state just as of yet so i decided not to do this as i thought it was cheesy and you know, I thought maybe if I just defeat the Leviathan a couple more times, maybe open up a couple more bags, I'll be fine. So I left it for now. Then we went to go fight Astrum Dias, which was an interesting boss fight. You can check this out right now. I was prepared to fight this a long time ago. Nice, only his head is there. Oh, this ain't the Moon Lord. Oh no, you have to come close to the middle when he does that spinning attack. I'm about to die. It's close. I did manage to die, but we did beat the boss. So that was pretty neat. And this is actually where we decided to try and go to the sand dimension that I was talking to Arma about. He's never been here. Well, we went into the sand dimension and we crashed the game. What happened? What is this nether portal? You have to stay in here for like... Like saving map oh, game crashed. There's something about the multiplayer dimension within Calamity Infernum that just doesn't work. The multiplayer does not like this dimension and so I had to requit the game, restart it, blah blah, all the fun stuff. But we quickly regained ground and we didn't lose too much. <laughs> Solar Eclipse is happening. Since our game crashed, we had to go refight Astrum Dias, which, well, wasn't a problem for us, as we're literally past Moon Lord. And once this was over with, we went over to the Underworld, got ourselves the summon for the Profane Guardians, and as we came over to the right side of the world, we were just completely flabbergasted by the amazing landscape architecture of this ancient civilization of this ancient city but what actually happened is we just couldn't figure out how to summon in these meatballs so i had to go on reddit and search it up apparently you have to stand by the edge of like the left side over there of this whole place which makes no sense it wasn't like that ever before at least when i played the game but sure that's what we went to go do and as we were fighting these guys we actually realized that they're bugged and this is just another one of those bosses that don't work in multiplayer for some reason even though i thought calamity inferno mode was fixed with multiplayer but i guess not essentially they would just become invulnerable once you broke the little shield to get through to them so what we had to go do is like we do this weird teleportation thing where one person would stand near the barrier then like teleport back then teleport home then teleport back to the boss fight and once we did this we're actually able to fight the profane guardians and well this is where we defeated them and well we took them out I don't want to go over this boss fight too much because, well, it was weird and it was bugged out for half the time, so it's not really enjoyable to watch. But yeah, we like, we took them out and Providence is the real boss that you should be waiting for. And oh boy, was Providence difficult. I remember when I was playing Inferno of myself before the buff, it really wasn't as hard as this. Took it out in like a couple of tries, but this was a whole different boss. And we were not ready for what we were about to get our hands into. We went into her tiny little arena. It's, it's, it's pretty freaking big. We set up a spawn point and well i chucked the little summoning orb on the altar and we went to go fight providence yeah just show you how this boss fight went hopefully they didn't buff it well i can already see it's buffed as if the bosses weren't hard enough okay well 
I don't think Providence itself damages you, right? It's from what I remember. It's all going out. Where are you? Are you even <laughs> in the too. arena? I'm at the very edge. I'm just using my B thing from a distance. Okay, well then stay alive, I guess. Because if I die, then I need to do that. Aw, oh, damn. I'm gonna die. I'm about to die. I died. We died over and over and over again. And over and over again, nonstop. We had to find out different strategies because only one person at a time could have infinite wing flight. We were trying to strategize, do everything in our power to defeat Providence. And after a long and treacherous boss fight, we gave up for the time being and went to go fight Dragon Folly. He's like an off brand yarn. But don't die. The attack is so annoying. I mean, like, dashes at you and then shoots balls in every direction, then dashes at you and shoots, like, feathers in every direction and dashes at you. And just does that, like, five times. You just do, like, the old Duke strategy where you just, like, go to the side. Yeah, the projectiles fly in every direction, that's the thing. Bro, this fly is harassing me. <laughs> in real life? Yeah. Yes. I swear, this is the same fly from last time. Nice. After defeating Dragon Folly, we placed down the relics and came back to fight Providence again. You can charge up your adrenaline here pretty good. I don't know how you're almost dead. How the f did I die? What? Lithuanian average uh, Terraria player. I don't have infinite wind flight time. This part I hate with a passion. Shit. Shit. Ah. We were doing this non-stop, literally, for probably 30 minutes straight. Fuck, I just took like 200 damage, bro. No! I fell in the f***ing lava! <laughs> bro, I was trying to get to my f***ing stupid mount, and I, I pressed T. I pressed the check chest. And after one lucky attempt, this is what happened. Once I get my adrenaline, I can just like teleport to you. Do we teleport back when we're about to die or when we uh... uh... When you're about to die, but that's if you have the shiny stone, the thing from Golem that heals you when you stand still. I do. Okay. I'm about okay, to die. Go. Cause I'm using my rage right now, I'm feeling good. I have my adrenaline. And you can teleport back if you want, because you're low. Oh shit, you died. He's gonna start shooting lasers, so you wanna be careful. The lava's gonna start rising too. Fuck, f come, come. Actually. Oh shit, I got it. Yes. Good Easy. Bro, I didn't even try. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we defeated her, and I was quite hyped. After we defeated Providence, well, our next boss is Poltergast, which is probably my most hated boss of all time. It's in the top three hardest Inferno mode bosses for me. I don't know why, I just don't like his AI, but well, I had to get ready for him. I went out of my way to go and craft the Angelic Shotgun at this point because the Angelic Shotgun, in my opinion, is the best weapon for the Ranger class when fighting Poltergast, and so I also had to go craft Tarragon Armor and all of the wonderful accessories. I got myself a bunch of Life Crystals while going to get myself Tarragon Armor, and during this time, me and Armor went to also go fight Stormweaver. I died, he died, and we fought it again. I like that his attacks like, are very like, easily, like, you could tell. Come on, I'm about to die. I'm about to come. Okay. The sound he makes when he dies, I mean, you what? <laughs> this time we beat him, and I got myself the Storm Dragoon, which was a pretty decent weapon, which was like an OP version of the Daedalus Stormbow. So that was pretty neat. And after this was done, I went over into the dungeon and dug out a massive arena for the Ceaseless Void, and also Boulder Gas, because we're going to fight them both here. Anyways, we went to go take out the Ceaseless Void, and this boss wasn't too difficult. It was actually probably easier than when I fought him personally in my solo Inferno mode playthrough, which is on my channel. So I don't know. I don't know why they made this one easier. The boss fight was easy as is in the very beginning. This is how the boss fight went. What? You just have to fight it like this? Is your view also very big? Like... Yeah. 
What the hell? Oh my god. F no, my 101 platinum. How is this even a magic weapon? This is the literal gone. Oh, he's doing the OG attacks. Uh, he gives me trauma. That wasn't too bad. We beat him pretty quickly, and then we went to go fight Cygnus. And you can check this one out for yourself. So you you're telling me you fought Cygnus when he was like already like this? But he's not too bad. Well yeah, I know, but like You're able to cheese him if you just get a giant minecart across the map. Oh really? He's just the brain of Cthulhu but well. Think about it. Yo! This one was definitely buffed. I had some issues with it, but we beat him. We went to go place down the relic, and after that, we went back into the dungeon to get ready for Poltergast. We defeated tons of enemies to get ourselves more Phantoplasm, as we're going to need it to craft the summon for Poltergast, because I really don't want to defeat like a hundred enemies every single time we want to spawn this boss, because we're going to be dying quite a lot. So, you know, having like a quick respawn is pretty good. Anyways, once we summoned it in, you can check out for yourself how this boss fight went. I was having quite some trouble. Yo, my character is confused. I have confusion and my armor is broken and slowness from the bat. Where's Poltergast? Ran away? Is the boss still there? Where is it? Was doing that attack. I hate this attack, you can't dodge it. I think they gave more space for it now. Oh, this guy's a criminal. We can go after you, I need to heal. I'm about to die. I don't even think the, uh, there's any specific part that's hard, it's just like it just lasts a long time. But I, I feel like they nerfed this, because this is kind of easier than I remember. But somehow, God was just really liking me this day, don't know why. And well, just, you can see how far we got on our very first attempt. I remember I died at the very end. There was like this like, uh, maze thing that he does, and I died at the very end. Or no, I died right here. Super hexagon. This is so hard. Much. Oh no, I died here. I think it was. You better not die there. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, we beat the boss, and Poltergast was completely cheesed. I don't know how we beat him. This shouldn't have been possible. I don't know what type of luck we had here, but we took him out, even though he's like the hardest boss for me. We are now on to the big boy bosses. Our next boss is the Devourer of Gods. So, I crafted myself the Cosmic Worm, and we were out on our way to get Blood Flare armor. I literally crafted like all the accessories for the Ranger class pre-Devourer of Gods arsenal, only to realize that I hate pre-devourer of gods and onwards ranger class and i need to switch to melee oh! Yo! so here goes boyo wasting all of his time crafting all of the accessories all of the weapons for the ranger class doing the acid rain event to check it off post moon lord yo mini boss Bro, come on, this is a mini boss. Going into the abyss, getting the sulfuric acid cannon, getting all the various different abyss accessories, grinding for the reaper tooth necklace, getting the Halley's Inferno, and going to actually fight the Devourer of Gods. So we went back to the jungle arena, me and Arma, and we went to go fight the Devourer of Gods, and we were having a very rough time. Check out how a couple of these boss fights actually went. It's uh, a skill issue. Because <laughs> the platform is not done and I couldn't fall down. No! <laughs> oh damn, this is updated. Where is he? Why is only his head there? I don't know. Where is he? He's targeting. I don't know, only his head appeared. 
Oh, it's so delayed. Because I'm not in the center of it. But yeah, it was kind of tragic. It's very hard with two players because you don't really know when the boss is going to target you. He just randomly starts jumping various different players. It was horrible. So we had to figure out a strategy where one person would rest while one would fight. And if one of us died, the other person would get a shot to fight the boss. So that's exactly what we did. And this is also where I realized that I should probably switch classes after fighting the boss a couple more times. Came on me like very weird, like weird diagonal. Oh, he's not hard. Whoa, he came from the wrong side. Why doesn't my normality relocator work? Around this time, I also hopped on solo and went into the sand dimension. I fought the two different bosses that were there. They're kind of boring, nothing really too interesting with them. It's kind of like the Leviathan type vibe where, you know, you're fighting this one boss and then the giant sand shark spawns. And then also while I was in solo, I decided to go and fight the devourer of gods a little bit more, thinking that it might be easier. And so you can check out how all of this went. I didn't beat him, but I got stupidly close. I mean, the, the Devourer of Gods is pretty easy when you're playing solo. And so once Arma joined in, I cleared out a little bit more of the arena and still continued to fight the Devourer of Gods. By this point, we were having so much trouble, we couldn't defeat him. My crit is big and it keeps getting bigger. Bruh, you keep on breaking the walls. Yes, I'm gonna get my adrenaline. Do it to you. Remember the sixth one. I will Did you die? Oh no. Oh, I didn't even see the laser, what? Whoa, I, I rammed. Literally by anything. Like, we, we, there was just, we're making no progress in Devourer of God, so I decided to go to melee class, and so I need to get myself a whole new, just plethora of weapons, armor sets, accessories. It was horrible, but I went through the entire process. And by the way, for the Devourer of Gods, I would recommend Omega Blue Armor and actually the Soul Edge. I only used Blood Flare, but when I did it by myself, I used Omega Blue because either way, if you're fighting the Devourer of Gods, he's almost gonna always one-shot you. So like the extra like 50 HP or like the health points, defense points that you get from the Blood Flare armor does absolutely nothing for the Devourer of Gods. Maybe for Yarn, yeah it would, but you're probably not gonna fight, you know, Yarn with Blood Flare armor regardless. So yeah, I basically did a complete 180 and switched to the melee class around here. This is where we utilize the strategy of one person basically fights the boss while the other person goes away to heal. And well, this is how we managed to defeat the Devourer of Gods and you can check out this clip right here. Come back to spawn, go back to spawn. Go! Go back to spawn right now. My adrenaline's ready. No! Dodge part. Is he after you? Three. Four. Five. killed me bro because uh, yeah i don't know where he's going to because like one, he does one attack on you and then he does one attack on me i don't know which one to, to go for mm. 
No. Did you get him? <laughs> what happened? I died. We beat him, man. Like right as I died, I killed him. Once we took out the boss, we went to go get a bunch of nightmare fuel, dark sun fragments, and endothermic energy. And once we had that, we basically crafted all of the pre yarn items. I got myself full God Slayer armor in no time whatsoever. I crafted myself all the various different accessories. At this point, Arma also switched to the mage class, and he did not play as a summoner, as summoner was just completely horrible at this stage of the game. Also, crafted myself the Galaxia, which I never really liked. I really dislike the Galaxia rework that they did. I like the cool abilities, but the weapon is just so horrible to use now. So I was just using the Excelsis, which is the one weapon dropped from the Devourer of Gods. It's just better. I really like the old Galaxia where it had like the homing projectiles. It was better. If you think this one's better, I don't know, you're probably just lying to yourself. But anyways, Yarn, we are here to fight Yarn. We are fighting him. Yes. And well, he's difficult. That's all I, that's, that's all I can say. He's hard. I don't really know how he worked. I don't know his AI at all. I only fought him once. But this seems kind of easier from when I fought him. Well, you have to do both the phases at once. He dodge and like literally do like all my HP in one dodge. Why is he not attacking you? Oh, this part you need to like shield bash like in devour gods. I'm basically full. Just cut, go back to spawn. I'm full. I'm full. I hate that. There's such a big dash cooldown. I'm about to die. Yeah, I'm also about to die. Stray projectiles, bro. We were dying a lot, a lot, and we took many L's in their journey to fight Yarn, and we had to take many breaks. But you know, we put the time in, and here is our decent attempt at taking out Yarn. Before, like the dash is like stacked. Are you able to dash like instantly after just dashing. And the Galaxia is so peaky cooking. My my adrenaline is almost good to go. Where is he? How much health does Yarn have in total? I don't know. How do you kill this one? Damn. He's dead? And as you can see, in no time whatsoever, we defeated Yarn, putting us pre-Supreme Calamitas and pre exo Max. We went to go craft a full set of Auric Tesla armor, which was interesting. Mining Auric Tesla without Vein Miner looks like such a pain. You could probably die mining <laughs> How? if you were just not careful. Oh, I found it. Yeah, what's wrong with that one? Oh, if you touch it. Yeah. It required all the various different armor sets that we had recently crafted, and I also crafted myself the Ark of the Cosmos, which I also didn't like too much, as it had the same type of vibe as the Galaxia, but you know, at least I can hold it down, and it was a little bit better. It did remind me of the OG Galaxia. So yeah, we got all the good accessories that we needed to get. I got myself the Celestial Tracers, I got myself the Asgard Aegis, I got myself Yarm's Gift, the Elemental Gauntlet, all the funky stuff. I then went to go fight the Cosmic Guardians to get myself the war banner of the sun as it's recommended literally up until end game and we also went to go find a bunch of the power cell factories so we can go fight the exomex we went to decode all of the exomex shenanigans but we realized that this is going to take forever so instead what we did is we crafted the summon for supreme calamitas and summon her in and well this is how the boss fight went supreme bitch no I hope you know the boss fight's kind of changed. You have to kill this ultra guy. This guy? Yo! Damn. Go to spawn. Uh, Go here. I'm healing, 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 healing. Okay, I'm coming back. 
Whoa, what is this? Are you supposed to dodge that like water thing? Yeah. I'm so glad all those explosive things are after you and not me. I'm back. Okay, go oh, heal, shit. go heal, go heal, go heal. Died. When you have full health, you have to be able to survive. The thing is that she's similar to the Bower of Gods. This one part at the very end is pretty hard. It's like extreme bullet hell. Fuck, I'm gonna die. Come on, we're almost done! I'm in, go heal. Or did no. you die? Dead. You're dead? Let's go. Literally on our very first attempt, we managed to defeat her. I don't know how. I really don't know how. Literal luck. I do not have God mode on, I promise. But yeah, we took out Supreme Calamitas by just like sheer luck. Maybe because we're playing on multiplayer, it's a little bit easier. But that was, it was, it was difficult, but we beat her. And now see, I thought I could actually start getting like good weapons now, but no, we need to defeat the Exomex to get any of the rest of the endgame gear because we needed the Exoprisms. So well, it just ensue a long, treacherous time lapse of me getting a bunch of power cells. We went to actually farm out the little bugs within the little bases themselves so we can get them faster and once we finally had enough of the power cells we decoded everything and then we went back to the jungle placed down the summon for drade on there and we summoned in the exomex and this was horrific i hate the exomex they are the hardest boss for me i've never beat them not even in normal calamity not in revengeance mode not in death mode not in infernum god forbid infernum mode wait what does the skeleton skeleton head do don't click it. What if I press it? And so when I say I got carried by Arma here because he actually put the diamond to like learn these bosses attacks, I, I really mean that he carried me here. He literally did all of the work. I'm not even joking. I'm not even going to lie. This guy just completely carried. He did all the work. That's all I can say. He was guiding me through this entire boss fight. And well, this is how it went. Uh, you want to pick the one on the right and then the one in the middle. That's the easiest combination, at least for me. You just want to stay close to them and go circles around them. What the f*** is going on? What are they doing? I'm about to die. Thanos! We summoned in Thanos! I'm gonna go heal. You deal with this. Yo, what the fuck? I died. You died? Yeah, I died. Bruh. How do you set oh. you get root here, bruv? How are you supposed to do this? So extreme. Why wasn't the other most boyos and Artemis together? There's only one of them. But I don't have my fishing equipment on. That's why I died. So easily. I'm about to die, bro. I don't get any of this. What's going on? How do you do this? Yo! This attack. If you're not close to him and not prepared, you are so dead when doing that against that attack. I'm about to die, I'm gonna restart heal up. <laughs> Bruh. All my healing efforts went to Because one of their little green flashes hit me. So did we kill them? Easy peasy. So yeah, after a while, we defeated them. Thank goodness for Arma. I don't know what I would do without him. And all that's left is to get all of the endgame gear. This is where for the last 30 minutes, we rejoiced in our victories. I need the true Excalibur. No, I don't have enough. I don't have enough Chlorophytanium. Oh, oh, the favorite weapon. Psh, you don't bite. Oops, misclick. Oops, misclick. Oops, misclick. Show me the one that he don't bite. Or oh, that thing. 
Got all of the greatest gear that we can get. Got myself a full set of Demon Shade armor. Armo was testing out all of his weapons. I was testing out all of my weapons. I got all the various different accessories. And we went to go do the boss rush, which was pretty neat. And so here is a little compilation of us messing around in the boss rush. Thank you. Damn, bless. Damn, damn. You have to hold it. Does it become harder? All bosses become buff. So I have Cthulhu does like a ton of damage right now. Of course he's still easy to beat. What? I have my adrenaline somehow. I'm gonna heal up. Okay, this healing is doing nothing because this f boss keeps on attacking. The bosses don't go in order, no? So what about like the drain on all those guys? They're gonna be buffed as well? well? I don't think they're gonna... I think all the bosses are just scaled to be like a bit harder. Except maybe the last bosses, I don't know. Like I guess, the, I think the last bosses are gonna be the same difficulty. Oh my god, he's so fast. I have my adrenaline as well. I'll probably yeah. save it up though for the next boss. Yes, save it. We need it for this boss. Okay, now, yeah, he got destroyed. And my rage is already ready again. I just used it. I have my adrenaline for Moonlord if I don't take any damage here. I took damage. You can teleport back to the jungle if you want. Go heal, because I'm going to die. Get ready, to, get ready to wormhole to me. I'm at spawn. Oh. I'm at spawn. Yeah. Why did these ones go out so quick? Ooh. I almost have my adrenaline. And of course it's only his head. I couldn't dash. I couldn't dash at all for some reason. But I took out most, most of his HP. Got like 13 more seconds. What? I dashed. I, it didn't even let me dash. I don't know why. The dash cooldown is so long. There you are. We died on the Devourer of Gods near the very end. 90% of the way of doing the boss rush. We didn't go through it just because, well, we didn't feel like it, frankly. But there you go. This has been Inferno Mode, the movie. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more videos like this, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd greatly appreciate it. But anyways, this has been Boyo. Peace out.